A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, March 9, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. Before starting this video, I wanted to greet all my followers, as it has been a little over three months since I last recorded a video on YouTube. The last cyclone we had in the Atlantic Basin was in mid-November when Tropical Storm Sarah affected Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, and Honduras. By the end of November, the 2024 hurricane season officially ended. It turned out to be a hyperactive season, causing significant damage, especially in parts of the southeastern United States. However, I will now begin recording new videos for the upcoming hurricane season, which officially starts on June 1st. That means we have less than 100 days until the season begins, so we can start discussing long-term projections and preliminarily anticipate what kind of cyclone activity we might expect. Although we still have several months before the season starts, we can already analyze sea surface temperature anomalies, first in the equatorial Pacific, where we monitor the progress of ENSO, El Niño or La Niña, and also in the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. Evaluating sea surface temperatures in these areas is crucial for long-term forecasting of how active or inactive the next hurricane season might be. In this video, I will first discuss the ENSO conditions in the equatorial Pacific and examine how La Niña has evolved. Then, in the second part of the video, we will analyze the sea surface temperature anomalies in the main cyclone development region. As you know, last year, we frequently discussed record high ocean temperatures, which fueled the hyperactive 2024 hurricane season. Since late 2024, we have been in La Niña conditions, which are associated with colder than normal sea surface temperatures in the Niño 3.4 region. However, as you can see in this image, blue colors indicate colder than usual temperatures, while yellow and reddish colors represent above normal temperatures. Notably, in the Niño 3.4 region and along the western coast of South America, sea surface temperatures are currently above normal. In fact, the waters west of Ecuador have been warming significantly over the past few weeks. This change in sea surface temperatures is also evident in this graph, which shows how temperatures have evolved over the last 15 days. Specifically, in the Niño 3.4 region, we have observed considerable warming. Although this may suggest that La Niña has ended, remember that for La Niña to officially be over, sea surface temperatures in the Niño 3.4 region must remain above minus 0.5 degrees Celsius for three consecutive months. While the latest data shows that temperatures have risen close to normal and are significantly higher than typical La Niña levels, it is still too early to declare La Niña over. However, it is interesting to note that La Niña is weakening, which could have major implications for the Atlantic, especially if El Niño develops before the hurricane season begins. Now, let's take a look at the ENSO forecast models. Both statistical and dynamic models suggest that La Niña could dissipate between April and June. More importantly, during the peak of hurricane season, August, September, and October, most models predict neutral ENSO conditions or possibly the return of a weak La Niña in the fall. Looking at another projection from the CFS model, we can see that it also forecasts La Niña ending in the coming months. However, by the peak of the 2025 hurricane season, the models suggest that neutral ENSO conditions will prevail. The latest forecast from NOAA shows that for August, September and October, there is about a 50% chance of neutral ENSO conditions, a 15% chance of El Niño conditions, which remains low. This means there is a high probability that we will have either neutral ENSO or La Niña conditions, which is not good news. Why? Because neutral ENSO or La Niña conditions reduce wind shear in the Atlantic, making it easier for tropical cyclones to develop and strengthen. This graph shows that historically, La Niña and neutral ENSO conditions tend to result in above-average hurricane seasons, while El Niño years tend to be less active. More importantly, there is little difference between La Niña and neutral conditions, and both typically lead to above-normal hurricane activity. However, this is still preliminary, especially since we have not yet passed the spring predictability barrier. Historically, we do not get a clear idea of ENSO conditions for peak hurricane season until May or June. So, for now, we will continue monitoring. In the second part of this video, I wanted to discuss the sea surface temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic. Looking at this map, the yellow and reddish colors indicate above normal temperatures. However, something interesting is happening. Just west of Africa and in the tropical Atlantic, we are starting to see some blue colors. This means that this area has been cooling down significantly over the past few months, which could be good news for the hurricane season. In fact, we can see this cooling trend in this graph, which shows that since mid-January, temperatures have continued to drop and are now approaching normal values for this time of year. This cooling is due to a strong Azores high in recent weeks, which has strengthened the trade winds, increasing evaporation and ocean heat loss. This is a significant change, especially considering that for almost two years, we saw record high ocean temperatures in this region, 
which contributed to extremely active hurricane seasons. Additionally, I wanted to share with you these graphs that we frequently showed during the past hurricane season. In orange, we have the sea surface temperatures as they evolved over the past year, where they remained at record levels or very close to the historical record we saw during the 2023 season. However, take a look at this year in blue. Sea surface temperatures in the main development region have been decreasing dramatically since mid-January. And although they are still above normal, we are now within a much more typical range and not as extreme as we saw last year. So, this is definitely good news. Hopefully, temperatures will remain close to normal and the record-breaking temperatures we saw in 2023 and 2024 will become a thing of the past. This could potentially help prevent the 2025 hurricane season from being hyperactive. Now, we are talking about the main development region, which includes the Caribbean Sea and the Tropical Atlantic. While the Tropical Atlantic is cooling, the Caribbean Sea is still at record high temperatures. This graph shows that, unlike the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea remains at record levels, which could create favorable conditions for intense hurricanes in the region. In the Gulf of Mexico, ocean temperatures remain very warm, particularly in the western and southern Gulf, at levels similar to those seen in 2024. Again, it is still too early to predict exactly how active the 2025 hurricane season will be. We need to keep monitoring how ENSO evolves and how sea surface temperatures change over the next few months. Before I wrap up, I want to mention that I will be recording more videos in the coming days to discuss the seasonal hurricane forecasts that have already started to be released. To make sure you don't miss any of my videos, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you get updates whenever I upload new content. That's all for now, see you in the next video.